Hello students, in this video we'll see how to compute the gradient in polar coordinates. So let's recall that gradient grad f or nabla f is a vector field and it's the vector field which in Cartesian coordinates is partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y. That's the gradient in Cartesian coordinates. We'd like to find the gradient in polar coordinates. So to do that we need to find the corresponding relationship in terms of using the chain rule. So if we have f is a function of what? f is a function of r and theta, and r and theta depend on x and y. So to find the gradient in polar coordinates, we need to find the function f as a function of r and theta, where r and theta depend on x and y. So what would partial f partial r be? Partial f partial r will be, well, let's do partial f Let's do partial f, partial x first, actually. So we want to find the gradient. Since we already know in Cartesian coordinates, let's do it like this. So partial f, partial x, since now x is the bottom row of my tree over here, partial f, partial x will be partial f, partial r, partial r, partial x, plus partial f, partial theta, partial theta, partial x. And now it's important to realize when we're doing this calculation over here that x and y are independent variables on this level, and r and theta are independent levels in this independent variables in this level. So this is really a partial f, partial r treating theta as a constant. This is a really a partial r, partial x treating y as a constant. So let's put the constraints on here to make sure we're doing the derivatives correctly. This is partial f, partial theta treating r as a constant. And this is partial theta, partial x treating y as a constant. Now we have all the correct constants relative to their levels in the tree. Now what's partial r, partial x treating y as a constant? Let's recall what polar coordinates are. So polar coordinates tell me that uh, r is equal to, as a function of x and y, the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now I'm treating r as a function of x, treating y as a constant. So this is the right formula. And so we do partial r, partial x, treating y as a constant, will be, well, let's think. I'll do the, I'll have a 2x over 2 square root x squared plus y squared. Those are the twos are going to cancel out over here. And we're going to have x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's r cosine over r. So this is just going to be cosine of theta. So partial r partial x with y as a constant is just the cosine of theta. And then if we have y, if we have theta, that's the tangent inverse of y over x. If I do partial theta, partial x treating y as a constant, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus y over x squared times the derivative of y over x with respect to x. That's going to be a negative y over x squared. So we're going to have negative y over x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be negative sine r sine over r squared. So this is going to be negative sine theta over r. So now we found the x derivative with respect to um, we found these derivatives over here, so let's fill that in. So now we have that partial f, partial x. Partial f, partial x is going to be partial f, partial r. I'm going to drop the, we know that now theta is the independent variable on that level. And then times partial r, partial x, which is cosine of theta. And then we have a, a negative sine of theta over r, partial f, partial theta. So that's the x derivative. So the x derivative is this whole expression over here. Let's do the y derivative. The chain rule is going to tell me the same thing. Partial f, partial y is going to be what? It's going to be partial f, partial r. Now I'm going to drop the constraints. We know what's going on now. Partial what? Partial r, partial y, plus partial f, partial theta, and then partial theta, partial y. All right, good. And now by a similar reasoning over here, the only thing that's going to change if I do a y derivative of this, if I do a y derivative, so if I do partial r, partial y, treating x as a constant, it's going to be instead of x over this, it's going to be y over this. So that's going to be r sine over r. So I'm going to get a sine over here. So this is going to be partial f, partial r, and then sine of theta plus partial f, partial theta. Now if I do the derivative of theta with respect to y, what will I get? Partial theta, partial y is going to be 1 over 1 plus y over x squared. And now the derivative of y over x with respect to y is just going to be 1 over x. So if I do algebraically simplify this, this is x over x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be r cosine over r squared. So I'm going to get an r, I'm going to get cosine of theta over r. So I have a cosine of theta over r. 
And there we have it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to define two new unit vectors that are the unit vectors with respect to the polar coordinate, orthogonal, curvilinear coordinate system. So now if we treat x as, if we write x as our cosine theta and y as our sine theta, then I can do the derivative. I'm going to call this vector field position r is going to be what? It's going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta. And then I can do the derivative of this vector field position with respect to the radial variable r and get what? Cosine theta comma sine theta. And this happens to be a unit vector. I'm going to call this unit vector e r hat. I can do partial r of this vector field of position with respect to theta and get what? And get negative r sine theta, r cosine theta. And I'm going to pull out that r because that's preventing it from being a unit vector. So this is going to be r times e hat theta. And e hat theta is a unit vector. So what is e hat theta? This e hat theta is exactly equal to what? This e hat theta, e theta hat, is equal to negative sine theta comma cosine theta. And now we can check what? We can check that both e hat theta and e hat r are unit vectors. And moreover, we can see that e r hat dot e theta hat is equal to 0. So they're perpendicular to each other as well. And that's beautiful. Because now what I can do is I can write the gradient in terms of this new system of vectors, e r hat and e theta hat. And so the conclusion from this is what? The conclusion is that partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y is going to be equal to what? Now I'm going to. Uh, for simplicity and save some space, I'm going to write this in shorthand notation. This is going to be fr, or partial f, partial r, cosine theta, minus sine theta over r, partial f, partial theta. And then sine theta, sine theta, partial f, partial r. And then plus cosine theta over r, f theta. And now I can arrange these terms in the correct fashion. If I look at this term over here, partial f partial r cosine theta and partial f partial r sine theta, those first two pink terms over there are really what? Are really f r e r hat. Beautiful. That's the first component of my gradient in polar coordinates. Then I can look at these second terms over here. They, ha they have an f theta over r and an f theta over r and a negative sine cosine. Negative sine cosine is e hat theta. So the next term over here is going to be a 1 over r f r e hat theta. And so we've just found the gradient in polar coordinates by looking at this new coordinate system. So this is the gradient of the function f in polar coordinates. So the gradient of a function in polar coordinates is the partial derivative of f with respect to r in the direction of e hat r. And then 1 over r, f, that should be an f theta, not an f r, that's an f theta over there, so f theta, because those are both thetas. Then 1 over r, f theta, in the direction of e hat theta. Thank you very much.